What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be kicking off Spring Security for Beginners. And in this course, we are going to include JWT as an authentication scheme without web security configure adapter. So if you're excited, make sure to smash that like button and we are going to continue on with the next slide. So just a couple things before we get started. Feel free to add this to your own project. I am going to be including a project that was a part of my Spring Security for Beginners course, but all of this does not depend on anything. You can easily add it to your own project with no strings attached. But just remember, this is an extension of my Spring Security for Beginners course. And if you want the exact course that I'm going to be using in this project, I'll include a GitHub link down below and you can easily clone it onto your machine and get the exact course that I'm going to be using. One more thing, so a couple prerequisites. I am going to assume that you have a beginner's knowledge of Spring Boot. You don't need a lot of knowledge, but if you don't have any knowledge of Spring Boot, this is probably not going to make a lot of sense to you. So it's probably better that you start off with a beginner Spring Boot course, and this will be a perfect place to plug my Spring Boot for beginners course, and you can easily take a look at that if you need to brush up on your knowledge before you take this. Also, this covers JWT and a pretty simple version of JWT. This isn't going to be a very complex example. So if you want something more complicated, it might not be the best case for you. But just remember, this can easily be extended as well too. You can easily add features to this on your own. And that's kind of the beauty of Spring Security. Also, I'm going to include a lot of details about how Spring Security actually works underneath the hood. So if that's something you're into, make sure to stick around. So before we get started, it's really important that you understand this visual representation of Spring Security. If I can give anybody a piece of advice, it's to memorize this visual representation of Spring Security because memorizing this will help you a ton and it will help you a ton in terms of not getting lost trying to figure out how Spring Security works. This is actually my representation of how the actual architecture works. But just remember that you can type in Spring Security Architecture online and you can get like 20 graphs because everybody who learns Spring Security is going to use this graph a bunch of times. And before I get started, it's really important that I show you just a little bit how this actually works. So what's going to happen is that you are going to send a request, just say hypothetically, this is javacoder.com, javacoder.com. I think that's actually a blog somewhere, but say you actually go to a Java website, what's going to happen if authentication is enabled is that this is going to actually go through the Spring Security authentication process. First thing that it's gonna do is it's going to hit the authentication filter, which we are going to actually configure in the next video. After that, it will go through what's called an authentication manager, which we will configure in a couple of videos down the line. We don't actually have an authentication provider. We're not going to configure it. There's a default authentication provider, thank God, because they are really confusing. And after that, we, what's going to happen is it's going to use this thing called the user detail service, which will pull users from our actual database. If the user actually exists, and we go back and the authentication manager actually has, is actually able to authenticate this user, what is going to happen is that your details are going to be stored what are in, what are in what are called a security context. So whenever you actually authenticate, all your details are stored, and that's why whenever you go to a website, a lot of times you don't have to actually keep logging in because it's going to be stored in this thing called a security context. And that is pretty much how the whole entire process works. There is a little bit more complicated scenarios than that, but overall from a 10,000 foot view, that is pretty much how the spring security architecture works. And that's all you really need to know for now. So let's go ahead and jump into actual IntelliJ. So this is pretty much an empty project. We do have Spring Data, GP, uh, Spring Data J, JPA. You're going to need a lot of this stuff already. Uh, we have some API endpoints. 
And right now, there is no authentication. We can just log in and uh, willy-nilly go to wherever we want to on this actual uh, API. But what is going to happen is that we are going to install through Palm Excel, and I'm actually, you know, make sure you go down to your Palm Excel. We are going to install this dependency that is going to have Spring Security Starter. And Spring Security Starter is what you want. I'm sure that there are different ways that you could actually install this, but just to make things easier and for learning purposes, just use, just start off with Spring Security Starter Pack. So you can pull this from actual Maven if you want to. Maven will have all of this for you. But if you want to just copy this from my GitHub and you just want to use the one that I'm using, once again, just go down into my GitHub down below and it will have everything that you need. Okay, so next thing that we need to do is we need to actually go in and make sure that Spring Boot Starter Security is actually working. So what's going to happen when you click the green button to actually run it and what will pop up is this using generated security password. So whenever you add Spring Security to the Palm Excel file, what's going to happen is that Spring Boot is going to generate this, pa this password for you in memory. It doesn't put it in the database. You don't need to worry about a database as of yet, although you're going to need a database down the line. Um, but as of yet, this is just going to be stalled in memory. So what we want to do is we actually want to go to a local host website and we want to actually see what happens. So before we could go all through our app willy nilly, we didn't have to worry about anything. We could just go to whatever part that of the app that we wanted to. But now what's happened is we are being presented by default with this login page. And what has happened is that Spring Security has done this for us. It's locked down our whole entire web app. And what we need to do is we need to test to make sure that this is actually working. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to take our, our password right here. So just take your password, then go in here. And then what you're going to do is just go ahead, paste it in here. And your actual user is going to be your just user. I don't know. Uh, they don't actually ever tell you that it's just user, but your password is going to be the the password that was in the console and the user is always going to need to be the user. So we're just going to go ahead and sign in. Now this looks like an error page, but this is actually what you want. You want this error page. This means that you are actually uh, logged into your app. And the reason that this is showing is that um, it doesn't have anywhere else to take you. You haven't programmed it to actually go anywhere. So you're just going to get this white label error page, which doesn't look good, but it's actually a sign that our app is really working. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, uh, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start actually configuring it. We're going to configure our security filter chain. We'll talk about security filter chains here in a second. Make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.